Hi everyone and welcome to The Vintage Company. My name is Julie and I'm a corporate historian. And every video I take a look at a different vintage consumer product and the story behind it. And today I'm looking into the history of hair dryers, including the Lady Sunbeam Controlled Heat Deluxe Hair Dryer, a hands-free bonnet dryer that promised to give women more leisure time. The origins of the hairdryer date back to the late 1800s, when a cosmetologist and hairstylist named Alexandra Ferdinand Goudefra decided to add a unique hair drying service to his salon. At first, according to Goudefra's son, the heat from a Bunsen burner was piped into a metal hood. A woman sat under the hood with her hair strung up on cup hooks until the hair dried. By the time Goudefra applied for a patent for his hair drying invention in 1888, several improvements had been made. The Bunsen burner had been replaced by a gas furnace. A flue at the top of the hood let hot air pass through, drying the hair as it went, and the cup hooks had disappeared. But despite its status as the first ever hair dryer, Goudefra's device lacked the crucial component of modern blow dryers, electric airflow. In the early 1900s, marketers saw the hair drying potential of another invention, the electric vacuum cleaner. As for the pneumatic cleaner, a vacuum that purportedly purged your home of dust and diseases like tuberculosis, pneumonia, and diphtheria, often pictured women using the device to dry their hair, quote, using the current of pure fresh air from exhaust, end quote. It is unclear from sources how many women took advantage of this alternative use for their vacuum. The 1920s saw the next major development for hair drying. Companies like Racine and Hamilton Beach married the technology of the vacuum with that of the electric blender to create the handheld dryer. Although less tedious than standing in front of a heater or fanning your hair by hand, these early hair dryers were heavy and took a long time to completely dry your hair. Some even included a pedestal to give your arms a break. But despite their shortcomings, these early versions marked the arrival of the modern hair dryer. Hair dryers became increasingly elaborate in the 1950s and the 1960s. Hood hair dryers brought the professional salon into the home. Portable hair dryers comprised of a hose attached to a bonnet gave users the freedom to pursue other activities while drying their hair. And hair dryers appeared in multifunctional travel cases, complete with an electric nail file, polish dryer, compartments to carry brushes, combs, and bobby pins, and even special vents to dry stockings or lingerie while on the road. In 1956, Sunbeam Corporation, a company known for making many types of electric household appliances, introduced the Lady Sunbeam Controlled Heat Hair Dryer, a tabletop hair dryer complete with a plastic hose and a vinyl bonnet. The hair dryer had four heat settings and was scientifically designed to direct warm air through the hair, concentrating on the back of the head where the hair was heavier and harder to dry. According to Sunbeam, the Lady Sunbeam Controlled Heat Hair Dryer was 38% faster than the average hair dryer. In 1958, Sunbeam added a deluxe model, featuring a nail polish dryer and a sliding door to conveniently store the hose in the cap. The Lady Sunbeam Controlled Heat Dryer was not only advertised for its speed, but also for the freedom and relaxation it promised the women who used it. An ad noted, Incidentally, your hands are free to do your nails, jot a note, or phone a friend. Indulge your hair and yourself with Lady Sunbeam. Another emphasized, Women can now dial new beauty and leisure time with the comforting satisfaction of lovely radiant hair more often. It is likely that Sunbeam and other hair dryer manufacturers wanted to mimic the relaxation and socializing a woman might find under the hood dryer at a salon but with the convenience of never leaving her home. Home hair dryers soon became ubiquitous for both women and men. 
1976, sales of hair dryers reached a then peak of 22 million. With increased popularity came new awareness of potential dangers. Throughout the 1970s, newspapers reported on a rising number of reported hair dryer related accidents. Between July 1973 and August 1977, 29 people were electrocuted by hair dryers and electric combs. 26 of those cases were while the victim was in the bathtub. Investigators also examined 99 cases of hair dryers emitting sparks, flames, or pieces of molten plastic that occurred during the same time period. More troubling news emerged in 1979, when several hair dryers were found to release asbestos fibers from their heat shields, leading to a recall of 18 million dryers. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission in 1988, there were 172 deaths and 88 severe injuries from hair dryers over 11 years. The commission began working with the underwriter's laboratories to design blow dryers with waterproof switches and cords and these new regulations went into effect in October 1987. In 1991, additional laws required hair dryers to have ground fault circuit interrupters to reduce the risk of high voltage electrocution. By 1997, the number of hair dryer electrocutions had declined from an average of 18 deaths to two a year. Today, hair dryers remain one of the most widely owned household appliances. For decades, hair dryers have largely looked the same. But recent innovations from companies like Dyson may change how hair dryers look and operate across the industry. From the pneumatic vacuum cleaners in the early 1900s to Dyson today, hair dryers for the home have truly come full circle. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look back at hair dryers and the Lady Sunbeam Controlled Heat Hair Dryer. For me, it was really interesting to take a dive into the history of something that I use pretty much every day. If you like this video and you want to learn more about the history of companies and their products, please consider giving it a like and subscribing below. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.